Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome today to Jesus the Healer. We are so honored to be with you and we are honored to have you with us. And so we've come because we're hungry for the word. It holds our help. It holds our answers. And we have a wonderful, um, uh, Congre I'd say congregation, but I want to say just a studio audience. And we're just glad to be with you today and feast with you. You know, the word tells us in uh, the book of Psalm 23, you know it, that thou preparest a table before me. Where is that table? It's the table of his word. How many of you know what's on the table you have to take? Yes. <laughs> so today we're here to take it. Yes. And that verse goes on and it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. We're not taking what the enemy offers because we already have a table that's full of supply. The enemy's not at the table. Keep him at your back. Turn your back to him. Turn your attention from him. Yes. Notice what's on the table and just focus on being a partaker and not being impressed that the enemy's present. Since he's present, give him something to watch. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. Let him watch you eat your victory. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to remind you today, the greater one's on the inside of you. Yes. I said the greater one is yes. on the yes. inside. The greater one. Yes. Yes. The lesser one's on the outside. Yes. But the greater one is in us yes. and with us. Yes. And <clears throat> because he's in us, everything he is, is in us. Yes. Think of that. I mean, that's an amazing yes. thought. Yes. Omnipotence is in us. Yes. Yes. We're not the source of it. We're the temple of it. Yes. Yes. That's right. He abides. Omnipotence is in us. Amen. All power, yes. all ability, yes. all victory, yes. all wisdom, yes. all joy, all yes. peace, Amen. everything, all love. Yes. Uh, amen. Yes. Everything of him yes. is in us. Yes. Why? Wow. To give us the highest flow yes. to yes. bring us yes. into the highest way of living as we partake. Now there's the variable yeah, that's right. yeah. as we partake right. yes. of who is in us. How, you say, Pastor Nancy, how do you partake of him that's in us? You turn your attention there. Yes. You add your faith yes. words. Yes. You yes. bring your thoughts in line with who's in yes. and you speak about that. Yes. Yes. And you assign the power of the greater one in you when you speak it. Yes. Talk about it. Yes. Amen. Listen, the great work of the believer is this, believing. believing. Yes. <laughs> That's it. That is the great work of the believer is to believe. His work is to do. He is the one who does the work. Yes. Yes. We do the work of believing. That's right. He does the work of performing. Amen. Amen. Fulfilling it, yes. bringing it yes. to pass. And we are to do as he instructs us. Amen. 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 So how many of you know we're safe in doing what the greater one on the inside of us directs us to do. Yes. We are safe. Amen. Because his wisdom is in us. His ability is in us. Praise the Lord. Just remember that no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what surrounding you, omnipotence is in you, all power, all ability. Okay. Because he's in you, the healer's in you. Because he's in you, health 
yes. is in yes. you. Yes. It's yes. in there waiting yes. for our faith to be mixed yes. with it. Right. Now listen, yes. Hebrews tells us because the word preached, talking about to the Hebrews that were delivered out of Egypt, the word preached did not profit them. Yes. Now see, they had the word. Yes. 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 But it didn't profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith. Yes. Yes. In them that heard it. Well, how many of you know faith takes on an action? We have a part to play. Amen. But our actions should reflect what he's doing. Now, it says it did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. It's not enough that there's faith in your pastor. There's not enough that there's faith in family members. You have to have your own faith. That's their faith. You have to have your own. Why? Because you can't mix someone else's faith in with what's in you. You mix your faith in with what's in you. Now, they can bring their faith and agree with you, but their faith is no substitute for yours. And so... uh, Healing is in us. Yes. Why? Yes. Because the healer is in us. Yes. You know what that means? The end of struggle. Mm. Yes. Yes. I'm not struggling to get something. I'm turning toward what's in me because of who's in me. We are authorized to pay attention to the vine, not to the branch. We are the branch, yeah. Yeah. but the, the branch is, the branch only has success because of the vine it's yeah. connected to. Yeah. The branch yeah. never held itself up, yeah. never supported yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. The vine supports the branch. Yeah. Yeah. Remember what Jesus said in John 15, yeah. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Yeah. Yes, we bear fruit, fruit on the branch, but only because of who we're full of. Yeah who we're connected to, who we're supported by. Amen. Amen. The branch is simply a channel for the vine to produce the fruit. What's in the vine flows through the channel of the branch to reach the fruit, produce the fruit so that people's needs can be met by partaking. Amen. Amen. I, I would dare to say this. Faith is no struggle when you realize who's in you. When you focus on who's in you, when you partake of who's in you through what you say, what you think on, what you meditate on, and the actions you choose to take. Amen. Amen. Draw on all that is in you. Don't leave it unspent. Don't leave the greater one unemployed who is on the inside of you. Put his ability, his omnipotence, his power to work in your behalf. And how do you do that? Faith. By faith. Amen. 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 Uh, You'll remember the passage that the um, disciples said to Jesus. They said, what must we do that we might work the works of God? See, they saw these these amazing things that were produced by Jesus's life. And they saw miracles. They saw healings. They saw people raised from the dead. They saw saw the supernatural dominate the natural. And uh, in doing that, they weren't willing to keep living the way they had been living. That's right. Right. Yes. That's right. In seeing yeah. that yes. surround yes. them. So they said, yes. what, might, what must we do? Mm-hmm. Remember, so see, they recognized they had a part. Right. What yes. must we do yes. that we might do the works of God? Yeah. And Jesus said, this is the work of God yes. that you believe. Yes. It's about faith. Yes. Not It's about believing what the greater one on the inside of us is there to do through us. In us, for us, and through us. We become partakers of what's in us, but we also become a channel for who is in us to flow and be a blessing to those we come in contact with. Amen. Amen. Listen, the greatness of the one who's on the inside is enough for us and for others. He is enough to meet all, every single need abundantly. But not only that, he's enough for 
as our needs are met, that we become a channel that he can meet the right. needs of others yes. through yes. us right. who don't recognize right. Right. all that's available to them. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I take time to, in my preaching, uh, when I minister in services as well as on the broadcast, I, I tell stories. The reason is, is because testimonies hold answers. You know, the Bible is a record of the testimonies of the movings and dealings of God in the life of men. And because of that, those testimonies, we can read them, feed on them, and we have answers for our life if we'll pay attention. If we'll join our faith to it and not be mindless toward it and just treat it like it's another story. No, it's a story holding my help. It's a story holding my answer, showing me what God will do because God's no respecter of persons. If he will do it for them, he'll do it for me. Amen. He'll do it for you. So that's why I go back and I tell testimony. And today we're going to tell a bit of testimony. Um, we know this. We had, this, we had the testimony of what happened about Jairus' daughter yeah. 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 being raised from the dead. Yeah. What's one of the, there's many things to learn out of the testimony, but what's the big takeaway from that one? What's the big emphasis of that one? Only believe. In the face of everything that's going the wrong direction, speak the word and then don't get off of it. Yeah. Only believe. Hold fast yeah. to that word regardless of circumstances. That's what we find in the testimony of Jairus. When he got report, your daughter is dead, it's not too late for faith. That's right. Amen. It would have been too late for men to do something, but it's not too late for God to do something as we bring our faith. Amen. It's what we learn. What about the woman with the issue of blood? This was a woman who never settled for being sick. She was sick for 12 years and would not quit kicking against it. For 12 years, she went against with every, every resource to her naturally. She took her money and she went to doctors and she did everything. The Bible says she suffered many things and many physicians. It wasn't their fault. They were, they were doing all they could to help her. But we see she was not content and okay with staying sick. She kicked back. And when she heard divine help, Yes. When she heard word about Jesus, now yeah. she took all of her, all of her, if I could say this, the, the interest of her heart yes. and yes. she threw it yes. toward that yes. avenue. Yes. She yes. went after it. She got yes. out of bed. Yes. She yes. got dressed. Yes. Can you imagine the weakness that would have been in her body? Yes. Yes. For 12 long years of blood flowing out of her body, the strength going out every day just to get up and out of bed and get dressed yes. was her saying, I'm not, I'm not going to stay this way. I refuse refused to yes. stay this yes. way. Yes. And that's what we see about her. When she found Jesus, uh, the opposition was still there. There was a crowd. Yes. There was a multitude yes. keeping her with, out, outside of the reach of yes. Jesus. Yes. But she just, she just kept going. Yes. She just kept going. Yes. She pushed yes. against everything that pushed against her. Yes. 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 And she got in there and she just, she crawled on her hands and knees to reach him. Amen. What if she would have found where Jesus was at that day and saw him surrounded by multitudes and said, oh, well, I can't get to him. Walk off and leave without her help. So many people really do that. They show up at church and then let a distraction dismiss them. Do, let, let, um, just an undisciplined mind mm -hmm. yes. 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 steal from them yes. hearing their answer. Right. Yes. But this woman, when she showed up and and uh, around Jesus and saw that he was surrounded, uh, she thought, I'm, I'm going to find my place there. <laughs> and she got on her hands and knees and crawled. Why? She pressed, why? To touch the hem of his garment. Where's the hem? It's at the bottom of the garment. We know she got as low as she could and she worked her way through. <laughs> Meaning this, nothing is beneath us. Yes. Nothing's Amen. beneath faith. faith. My yes. husband, you say this, faith will do whatever it takes. Yes. Faith will do whatever yes. it takes. Yes. She wouldn't say, oh, that's, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go to all that trouble. Well, faith will do whatever it takes. Yes. And that's what we see, this woman with the issue of blood, she did what it took. Yes. Yes. 
Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So these accounts like this, they hold help and instruction yes. and encouragement for our faith. They put something in us. Yes, yes. Amen. So Amen. today I want to tell a testimony. We got to hear personally firsthand by a precious minister named Norval Hayes. I don't know if you got to, if you ever got to hear Brother Norval Hayes preach. You need to go on YouTube and you type in Norval Hayes Healing and there will come up many services of what happened in a revival. He taught faith and healing with such boldness and clarity but simplicity. He, uh, he's gone to heaven now, but the revelations stayed here. Yes. Yes. Amen. And, we, and so that's why I rehearse and repeat these revelations because in the testimonies we hear our help. Um, when Brother Norville, he was raised in a denominational church that taught him against healing. They, were, they did not believe in healing. Well, when he uh, came out from among that congregation, he got hold of the truths of healing. And uh, he was learning faith. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. you have to learn it. You don't yes. get it overnight. You have yes. to get around it. And people will listen to Brother Copeland, listen to the, the programmers on, the, on, this, on this network. Uh, they'll listen to us teach and they'll go, I don't quite understand. That's okay. Keep hearing. Keep hearing, right. Keep yes. hearing because yes. the more you hear it, yes. the more things will dawn on your spirit yes. Yes. and yes. things will unfold to you. And so Brother Norval, he was learning faith. He was learning about healing. And his daughter had, I believe it was uh, something like 46 growths on her body. Maybe the, the audience can tell me. Do you remember? Is it 46? It, it was around that. And um, he kept praying for God to heal his daughter. Oh, God, heal my daughter. Heal my daughter. Heal my daughter. Heal my daughter. He kept at it. Well, the Bible says if you seek, you'll find. Yes. Yes. If you knock, it'll yes. be opened. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you ask, it'll be given. Yes. Well, he was, he was asking, but he was asking without full knowledge. Yes. Okay. He was asking God, heal my daughter, heal my daughter, heal my daughter, heal my daughter. He did that for several years and he wouldn't let go of it. Even though he wasn't seeing any change, he would not let go. Yes. Yes. Because he would not let go, God was able to bring him into greater knowledge because he wouldn't let go. He wouldn't quit. And so he had been praying for years, but one day as he was walking through his living room, he was one, one step in his living room. The next step, he stepped into heaven. And Jesus took him to heaven. And his spirit left his body. And Jesus stood in front of him and he saw him just as you would see the, a person in the room with you. He, he, he was before Jesus and Jesus asked him one question. And this is what he asked him. How long are you going to put up with those growths in your daughter's body? Yeah. Here, Jesus, here Brother Norval's praying for healing and Jesus is answering that prayer by asking him a question. <laughs> See, we ask God to do something or pray for him to do something because we think it's on his end. <laughs> He's not coming up to the front on his end. So we're after him. Well, this is Brother Norval's this is where he was coming from. God, you need to do something. You need to do something. You need to do something. But when Jesus stood in front of him, Jesus brought it into the missing component with one question. How long are you going to put up with those gross in your daughter's body? And uh, Brother Norval came back with a question. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you know what? Most of us would have been in the exact same situation he was in. Amen. And um, so Brother Norval says, what do you mean? Because see, Brother Norval thought, if I can get God to do something, then my daughter will be helped. 
And he said, Jesus again, and he answered Norval's question by asking a question. <laughs> Jesus, this is what he said, I said. See, Brother Norval's focus on what he's saying, on what he himself is saying, and Jesus is trying to get him to focus on what Jesus is saying. Yes. And Jesus again spoke and said, I said, yes. how long are you going to put up with those gross on your daughter's body? Yes. Then he gave him the answer of how to quit putting up with yes. what he had been putting up with. Jesus said, if you will curse those things in my name. No, look, in my name. You curse them. He would, see, Nor, Brother Norval is waiting for God. G, God was waiting for Brother Norval. Yes. If you will curse those things things in my name. What's that mean? With the power that's in my name. Yes. Bring yes. the power yes. in my name yes. on the scene. Yes. Yes. Release the power that's in my name. Yes. So he's basically telling him the power in my name is at your disposal. If you use it, it blesses you. If you don't, nothing changes. It's not up to God to tell us that we can use that authority. He's already told us that. Yes. We don't have to wait for him to tell us again. Yes. The word tells us that that name has been given to us. It's a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And then we're told... Uh, that serpents and scorpions, they'll come against you. Tread on them. How are you going to tread on them? With power. What power? The power of the name. So Jesus said to Brother Norville that day, if you, look at the, look at the condition, if, if you, if you, not if God, if you, if you will curse those things in my name with the power invested in my name, they will die yeah. and disappear. They will. Yes. Not yeah. m- something might happen. No, they will. They will. Yes. This is what yes. Jesus said. Yes. They, will. they will. He said, if you will believe and not doubt. Yes. Yes. Doubt what? Doubt what Jesus just right. said. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Believe that you have the authority to curse it. Right. Believe there's power in the name. Yeah to cause it to die. Believe that when that name is laid on that situation, they die. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, uh, if you will believe and not doubt, just like I did with the fig tree. What did Jesus do with the fig tree? He went on and told Brother Norval, talk to it. Jesus said to him, that those growths are a mountain in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talk to it. Yeah. Tell it what you want done. Yes. Yes. What you want done. Yes. Not yes. what God wants, what yes. you want yes. done. Yes. And it will obey you. Yes. 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 If you do it in my name. Yes. Yes. If you bring power into yes. it. Bring yes. power yes. Yes. on the yes. scene. Yes. Then Jesus said, curse the roots of those gross. Mm -hmm. Now, how are you going to do that? With words. With words. Curse the roots of those gross. They will die and wither away Mm -hmm. and disappear if you will believe and not doubt. See, the variable is us, not God. It's, the variable is not power. Power always works if we will join our faith to it. Power needs faith mixed with it to activate it. Our faith activates the power of God. Amen. God's power meets faith. When those two are joined, you get a divine explosion called miracles, healings, answers. Amen. 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 Brother Norville said, when I came back from heaven, he said, my daughter was in her bedroom with a friend. 
And he said, the de- I, I intended to go in there. And he said, the devil said, don't go in there and do that. You're going to embarrass her. He said, so I went in there. (laughs) I went into her room and I laid my hands on her and I cursed those things. And for every day, he said, every day, I thanked God that they were dead. Every day. He didn't didn't go in and curse them again every day. He thanked God that that power in that name went into the root of that and was working at the root. See, the power of God will go to the invisible (laughs) into what is invisible and then it will do its work there and flow out to the visible. It worked at the root of that. And he said every day, every day I thanked God. You know how long every day was? For the next 40 days. You'd think after he saw Jesus, you'd think, oh, it's going to happen quickly. Because in our estimation, the next 10 minutes would have been perfect. (laughs) But see, the mind, the mind will start, well, it's taken too long. True faith knows nothing about a calendar. It knows nothing about a clock. It's not connected to the clock. It's not connected to the calendar. It's connected to what God said. So for the next 40 days, uh, he, every moment, every, every time throughout the day, thank God they're dead. Thank God they're dead. At the end of 40 days, in one moment, every single one of them disappeared from her body. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's how miracle power works. That's how healing power works. Listen, you don't want to miss it. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about this over the next few episodes. You know I can't say it all in one episode. (laughs) And I'm going to say it and I'm going to re-say it and I'm going to state it over and over again because these words are life. They're life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh is what Proverbs chapter 4 verse 22 tells us. And so we're going to keep holding on and speaking and declaring these words that are life and health to our flesh. You don't want to miss it. Join us next time. And until then, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, she teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 4th through the 6th. For more information, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.